Hi, oh YouTube. My name is Dexter, and welcome back to Dex Builds. This project is Anduin Rin for Heroes of the Storm. Uh, the newest support coming to the game, and Varian Rin's son. Hi, King of the Alliance. Uh, basically a title f thrust on him when his dad got murdered by Gul'dan. Uh, so he took over the mantle because he was the next in line. It, essentially, that's <laughs> kind of a shitty way to get the title of king, but I don't really see any other way it was gonna happen. So, there we go. That's, that's pretty much all that I know about Anduin. Well, I know that he's a priest, and he's got his dad's sword strapped to his back. I mean, that's not a very, okay, there it is. That's his, that's his dad's sword, but he's a priest, not a warrior, so he doesn't get to use it very often. Um, but, uh, yeah, he is a very interesting support. Um, essentially, he's just ranged Uther, but... I don't mean to say that's a bad thing, but a lot of what he does is just what Uther does, but at a distance, and arguably not as good? Um, but I'll go over that later. Uh, if you don't want to listen to me ramble on and on about all the different talents and choices and abilities that he has, feel free to leave right now. But for the rest of you chuckle nuts, you better buckle up, because we're in this for the long haul. Starting with his trait called Leap of Faith. Faith instantly pulls an allied hero to Anduin's location, granting them unstoppable while they are traveling. So you click on an ally and they come back to you. It's like a stitches hook, or the inverse of Garrosh throwing someone. I mean, it is exactly the inverse of Garrosh throwing an ally, because you pull an ally back to you. But I'll just show it off real quick. Select allied hero. I'll bring out Artanis, why not? <clears throat> um... There he is. There he comes. But yeah, ally hero changed. I'll just... I guess I've been in here for an hour. Holy shit, I didn't realize. Uh, but I just click on that dude, and he travels to me. Um, 80 second cooldown. While they're traveling, they cannot be stopped from moving. So, that's cool. Select ally hero. Be gone, Artanis. Uh, but there we go. That's how that works, and it's pretty interesting. I don't know why that's all the way up there, but it was, but okay. Um, it's... Definitely a get out of jail free card for an ally. Or it could be, if you were insane, a hard engagement tool. Uh because there's the this is my third time trying this, admittedly. Uh, I'm just gonna say that right now. I think I know what his best talents are, or at least I know what talents I'm going to take. Whether or not it's the right choice, I can't tell you for certain. I think I've got a good grasp on it though, but I've been wrong before, chances are I'll be wrong again. But, uh, I'm gonna look at his abilities, and then I'm gonna jump up to level 10 and talk about his ultimates, starting with his first ability called Flash Heal. Uh, I don't know why I have Renew. I don't need that right now. Go away, Renew. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, Flash Heal. You channel for a second, three quarters of a second, which is just damn close to a second. To heal an allied hero for 270 health at level 1. As the game progresses, that doubles, I believe? Let me, let me, at level 20, I believe it doubles. Let's find Choose out. No, it gains 300 bonus healing. Okay. Choose a talent. So it's a percent increase per level. I know that, I just don't know what the percent is. It goes from 270 to 570 at level 20. Uh, but you point, you click, and you cast it on an ally. I'm also pretty sure it's what Uther's heal is called when he's in his paladin, or in his ghost form. Uh, I don't know exactly, but I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Um, and this is where his Uther similarities start coming into effect with Divine Star. Send a light wave out that deals 146 damage to enemies and then returns to Anduin after reaching max distance, healing allies on the way back in, in a much wider path than it initially traveled in. Healing increases by 25% per enemy hero hit. Uther's wave of light just goes out and hurts all hurts all enemies, heals all allies. Anduin's heal only heals on the way in and hurts on the way out. Um, it's it's interesting. It's definitely a nice looking effect. It definitely is very flashy, but at the same time, it's just kind of hey, Uther did this, but I'm gonna say better. <laughs> uh, I don't know for certain. It's not as delayed, at the very least. It's just, hey, I've thrown out the thing, and it's coming back. It's on, like, a 15-second cooldown, or 12-second cooldown. You better wait for it. It's gonna be a bit. Uh, and then lastly, Chastise. 
Shove a Swell of Light forward, dealing 151 damage to the first enemy hero hit and rooting them in place for one and a quarter second. So you throw that out. It's like a leaming arcane orb, but way worse. Pretty much in every way. Except for the fact that it has crowd control built in. Um, but there we go. That's uh, his talents. Then we'll jump up to level 10. Um, when I first heard about one of his talents, I was very intrigued by it. It's called Holy Word Salvation. Um, you know that Battle for Azeroth trailer thing where Anduin kind of raised up his hand and had this giant dome of light around everybody and just raised all of his dead soldiers? That's what this is. Channel for 0.5 seconds to continue channeling for 3 seconds. While nearby allied heroes are in the area, heal them for up to 25% of their max health and grant them the protected status. Uh, looks like this. It takes a half a second for it to trigger, and then once it triggers, allies in this area heal for 25% of their max health, as long as they're in the area. The only downside to this ability is that you cannot move while it's active, while you're channeling it, and any kind of hard crowd control, like a displacement, a silence, or a stun, will stop you, and it's on an 80 second cooldown. It's, it's basically a healing version of Tyrael's Sanctification, but doesn't give you unstoppable. It makes you so you can't take damage, but it does not make you unstoppable. Which isn't terrible. It's decent. Um, but that's, uh... It is very susceptible to crowd control, because, as you saw, three seconds of sitting still is bad to, is three seconds that you can get hit by a stun, or a shove, or a silence. Uh, and when I say shove, I mean Tigus Grenade, Rainer Knockback, uh, Stukov, Shove like the actual massive shove that Stukov has, or the uh, triple slap that he gets. Um, I'm trying to think what else has a knockback effect that isn't a stun. I can't think of any right now, but you get the idea. You are very susceptible to hard crowd control, which is the downside to both of his ultimates, but the other one is, a, I don't want to say a little more forgiving, but it's called Light Ball. Imbue an allied hero with light. After 1.5 seconds, this light explodes, dealing damage to enemy heroes and stunning them for 1.25 seconds. The target gains a shield that absorbs 207 damage at level 10 per hero hit, which lasts for 5 seconds. It looks a little something like this. Boop. It's basically just Ragnaros' Blast Wave, but the entire build in a single ability. Unfortunately, it doesn't have an upgrade to level 20. It, there's no upgrade for Light Bomb at level 20. Um, which I find very odd, but whatever, what are you gonna do? Not a lot. I guess complain is the word, um, but I, the build that I would go with, I like, would use Light Bomb. It took me a little bit of back and forth to figure it out, but, and a little mental back and forth, but... Light Word, or Holy Word Salvation definitely is potent if you don't have to worry about hard CC. Um, but, uh, excuse me, but that's a problem because I'm pretty sure most of the uh, most popular heroes in the game currently have just that on their engagement. So sitting still for three seconds basically just says, hey, come hit me, do it. <laughs> uh, Anubarak, Diablo, uh, ETC, Dahaka, they can just walk up to you and there's nothing you can do about it. You just kind of have to sit there and hope to God that they miss, but you know... One of those is a point. And cl one of those characters have a point and click ability, and I don't think they miss very often. Uh, but that's just a thing. That's just a thing you're gonna have to deal with. Light bomb has the same issue, kind of in the reverse, uh, where if they have disengagement abilities, it's hard to use light bomb. But if you have a really solid engagement team, like let's say you have an Illidan on your team, you can light bomb him, then he can hunt somebody and drop kick him and explode for even longer. Or drop kick explode and stun them for even longer than drop kick would stun them for. Not a bad idea. Um, it would just be very hard to pull off and you'd have to be pretty close to him because not that big of a range on that cast. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger than your Q, but still. Um, but yeah, those are those are his basic talents, or basic abilities, or all his abilities, rather. So I'm going to reset talents and jump up to level 20 so I can take a look at all of his abilities rapid fire. Uh, so, ignore that I've been in the test area for an hour and one minute, and we will talk about all of his talents. At level 1, there's only one choice. There really is. There's only one choice, but I'll talk about them all. We have Renew. 
Basic attacks against enemy heroes empower the next use of Flash Shield to also heal for 252 damage over 5 seconds. So it's basically increasing the amount of heal you you're increasing your healing output by 40 or 45 percent ish it's somewhere between 40 and 45 percent i haven't quite figured out the exact number of it but it happens half of it happens immediately and the next half next half of it happens over five seconds um it's not terrible but it requires you to hit enemy heroes with basic attacks, which you don't have that long of a basic attack range to begin with. I mean, okay, say that you don't have that long. You've got standard range, but there's a lot of characters that do more damage than you do at the same range and a lot quicker. And I apologize about punching my computer desk tray, my keyboard tray, whatever you want to call it. Um, or there's Pursued by Grace. Damaging an enemy hero heals the lowest allied unit, or lowest health allied unit near at, or I say, I keep saying unit. Let me start this say. Let me start this sentence over again. Damaging an enemy hero heals the lowest health allied hero nearest Anduin for 61 health at level 20. It's not that great of a heal, but it is constant, and you don't have to use anything to get it to trigger. Unfortunately, the last talent is the only talent you should ever take. Bold strategy. Anduin gains all level, both of his level 1 talents, but flash heals increase, cooldown is increased by 1 second. Oh no! It's got a 5 second cooldown now instead of a 4 second cooldown. Whatever shall we do? Oh no! Lords help us! It's, it's the best choice. There's no other talent option. There is no other option. It is just, hey, you get healed for hurting enemies, and... Or you heal ally heroes for hurting enemies, and you get your or get a empowered Q if somebody tries to get too close to you. The only problem I have with the Q is that it is channeled. It takes one second for it to trigger, basically. And it's really not that... I don't want to say it's not that potent of a heal, because it's the same amount of health that Rhaegar heals for, for three targets. But Rhaegar's is point and click, with a lot higher mana cost. And it heals three people instead of one person. But it just seems very odd to have to use that on an ally uh, in the middle of a fight. Because I feel like if they walk away, then the channel breaks and you're shit out of luck. Because you can't heal them anymore because they walked away from you. But I like Bold Strategy. It's just, I, I, I think it's just the best. Um, because it combines the other two effects into one. But oh no, your basic heal has a longer cooldown. Has a slightly longer cooldown. Um, whichever way you want to slice it, it's not that big of a downside. Um, but Moral Compass, I was back and forth between two of these talents in this tier. Um, Moral Compass is interesting. Divine Star fires basic attacks at two heroes close to its apex for 70% normal damage. Um, so I'll show you what it looks like. That little outer crescent, um, it's kind of hard to see, but that outer, okay, that outer crescent is uh, where it'll fire auto attacks into. So you throw that out, and it'll fire two auto attacks, where instead of it does 100, instead of it doing 100, 185 damage, it'll do, I think, 130? 130, yep. Instead of 190, it does 130. Which is pretty decent, and keep in mind, allied heroes near you get healed for that amount. Uh, there's also Holy Reach. After hitting an enemy hero with Chastise, Anduin's next basic, basic attack is 50% increased range, more damage, and heals allied heroes near Anduin for 197 health. Um, this one's kind of weird. Um, Choose a talent. Choose the reason being, the heal, the auto attack buff is really strong. 280 damage. The problem is that it's on a 10 second cooldown, and you can only get one out of it. And the range at which it explodes is quite small. It's from there to there. From where anyone's standing to where my cursor is. Like, right there. So it's pretty small effect. Um, and then the last one is called Inner Fire. Increase basic attack speed by 20% and basic attack range by 15%. So, like I said, I've got a 5.5... I don't know, or rather, I don't know if I said it. I've got a 5.5 attack range. I'm pretty sure I said it, though. And it... 0.83 attack speed, which is a little bit slower than Diablo, Thrall, and Stitches. If I take Holy Fire, I gain comparable range to Jimmy Rayner and 1.0 attack speed. Uh, so I get one attack per second, which is pretty decent, as well as healing my allies for uh, every time I point or deal any damage, which 
is going to be a recurring theme with this build. But I was back and forth between Moral Compass and Inner Fire. I think I've decided that I would take Moral Compass. It's just a little bit safer to use. Um, since this one requires you to get a little bit closer to the enemies than you probably should, uh, Moral Compass is on a 9 second cooldown, but it's bonus damage and healing as long as your allies are near you. So you throw it out, and then you... Whoops, I didn't click on them. You throw out the the big wave. You do damage to people on the way out. Uh, you can do up to basically three points of damage. I want to see if I can hit one person with three or with two bolts. Does that work? Nope, just fires one bolt. Okay, I guess it just say fire basic attacks at two heroes close to the apex. So I figured I kind of figured it would be if there's only one person, hit him twice, double tap him. But, nope, no such luck. <clears throat> but level 7 talents are Binding Heal, which is the one that I would definitely take. Casting Flash Heal on an ally heals Anduin for 175 health. It's just free healing that you don't otherwise need to use. Uh, Power Word Shield isn't terrible. Um, it does pair decently with the build that I would go with, but I don't like it because it's not Binding Heal. Um, and I don't really expect to be running at the enemy team all that often. Um, <laughs> I'll show you why in a second. I'll tell you why uh, here in a bit when I tell you what my build actually is. But uh, the other problem with Power Word Shield is that I figured it would be bonus shield or shield per per hero hit. But no, it's just you. If you hit a hero, I believe it refreshes the duration. I don't know exactly. Hold on, I wanna I wanna find out real quick. So if I throw that out, yeah, it. it Refresh, I think it refreshes the duration per hero hit. No, it does not. Okay, so you throw out one... You throw out one big wave, and then you get shields for it. It's it's not terrible, but it's only for you, not your team. Unlike... Well, I guess all of these are for you, but... Binding Heal is just... I mean, I already took the, Q, uh, the upgrade to Q at level 1. Might as well keep going. Uh quote-unquote keep going but <clears throat> blessed recovery also doesn't sound all that useful if anyone loses more than eight percent of his max health at once recover 50 percent of his health over three seconds uh has a 10 second cooldown the only problem with this is that the only things that i can think of that'll do more than eight percent of my max health are probably going to kill me um if you get hit by them chances are i'm already dead so it doesn't really matter um things like kalthos flame strike or pyroblast or the uh, a, a Q from Asmodan, a Globe of Annihilation from Asmodan. Uh, those are the big, the big, uh, or the, the 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 usual suspects, the worst offenders, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and those are the only ones I can think of. And chances are, if I get hit by a pyroblast, I'm not surviving it anyway. So taking blessed recovery doesn't seem like that great of an idea. Um, I definitely would take Binding Heal because I like healing myself as well as my allies. So Binding Heal. Casting Flash, heal on an ally, heals Anduin for, I guess, like 25%. 175, 175 triple or quadrupled is around 500 or, excuse me, is around, uh, shit, what is it? I'm bad at math. Um, whatever, it's a lot of health. It's basically 30 or 25% of the heal that you'd give an ally on top of the heal that you give an ally if you auto attack a hero. So, it's not it's not bad. Uh and just, you know, one second uh wait time on it. Uh but at level 20 or level 10, it really is whatever kind of upgrade you would want to go with, whatever ultimate you want to go with. Uh light bomb isn't terrible if you've got a very hot dive heavy team, like I said. Power of Salvation is good if you have a lot of squishies in the back line that you want to keep safe. Um, I would take Power Word Salvation just because I like it. Um, I like it more than Light Bomb, but if I have, let's say, a Butcher, a Diablo, an Illidan, a, uh, De and a Dahaka, it's a very melee-heavy team, but <laughs> if I've got a lot of engagement heroes, I'd take Light Bomb. Uh... <clears throat> Otherwise, I would take Holy Word Salvation. Uh, but at level 13, I think there's really only one choice here. Again, much like level 1. 
but I'll talk about them all. Speed of the Pious. While Divine Star is traveling, gain 30% movement speed. One thing to note about Divine Star, it'll come back to you no matter where you are. I thought it would return to the de destination, or the original cast point, rather. I thought it would, would return to the initial cast point, but no, it comes back to you. So you can use it as a, you can use Speed of the Pious as a kind of pseudo engagement ability where it just, you throw it out and then you mount speed running at people. And then you, when you arrive, you get a heal as well. So you can, my idea that I'm thinking is I run in, I cast that, bring them with me, and then they get healed when it arrives. Uh, so I guess the full build would be fire that backwards, stun or snare somebody, pull somebody back to me, and then heal them when they arrive at the... I guess in the middle of the fight, basically, which is why I kind of I'm back and forth between Light Bomb and Holy Word Salvation. Um, Light Bomb would help me engage better or help my ally engage better, but and also make it easier for me to get into pl get into position so I can walk up and just walk at people. Um, but as a kind of squishy, admittedly quite squishy support, it's probably not a good idea. Uh, but the other talents are Enchant Boots with Lion Speed, gain 5% movement speed. This bonus is tripled while Leap of Faith is active, or can be active. Rather, let me rephrase that. If you can use Leap of Faith, you get 15% movement speed. If you can't, you get 5% movement speed. And then lastly, Push Forward. Damaging an enemy hero grants 3% movement speed for 6 seconds, up to 15%. Um... <clears throat> so that's just, as you are dealing damage to people in the middle of a fight, you can get bonus movement speed, which isn't terrible, but I much prefer Speed of the Pious. It's on a 9 second cooldown, admittedly, and once it once the thing gets to you, that's it. You lose the buff, but it's the most potent, and I, I want to say arguably the most ubiquitous, because Lion Speed is only active... Er, Lion Speed doesn't do anything for you for 80 seconds at a time, and Push Forward is only good if you're able to consistently hit people. This one is just throw the thing and you're good to go. So I take Speed of the Pious. It also helps with my original idea, or my, my second idea of hard engagement with Light Bomb at level 16 with Holy Nova, but I'll read them all anyways. Even-handed blessing. If Flash Shield is cast on a different target from the last one that you use it on, refund 40% of its cooldown, which is two seconds. It's not that big of a deal. But yeah, just heal, heal an ally, Cast on a different person, your heal is on a three second cooldown now. Uh, <laughs> it's decent, um, but I, holy, I much prefer Holy Nova. After anyone catches Divine Star, it explodes. Healing, da or healing allied heroes and damaging enemies for the same amount, which is 220 health at level 20. Uh, so the idea would be throw that out, pull someone with you, and then have it explode on them and any ally nearby. That's the idea. Whether or not you're actually going to be able to do that is another question entirely. But throw it out, snare, pull him in here, and then explode on him. It does pair with Light Bomb, because you can give yourself an AoE stun when you uh, arrive on somebody, kind of like a really shitty version of uh, uh, Butcher's Charge and his flame bl or, uh, Furnace Blast. That's what it is. Butcher's Furnace Blast is... But nobody uses Furnace Blast for a reason, because Hitching Post is way better. Uh, there's also Inner Focus. Activate to reset the cooldown of Flash Shield and make its next cast heal for 40% more. Damaging enemy heroes with Divine Star reduces this cooldown by 10 seconds. Uh, you can take all 20 seconds off uh, if you hit more than two people. If you hit two people with your... Ugh, excuse me, with your Divine Star. It's pretty good. Um... I'll just show you real quick. So I will activate this, throw that out, and then hit, boom. See, it's off. It's already off cooldown. So I can keep that go. Oh, wait. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I want to see something real quick. All right, yeah, duh. <laughs> That's the whole point of it. It reduces, it resets the cooldown. Duh. I, I misread it. So activate that, heal that dude, throw that out, activate it again, then heal this guy again. It's a decent amount of... It's a decent chunk of healing. The other talent that is available to that tier that doesn't take anywhere near as much thought uh, to use properly is the Lightwell. 
Uh, summon a light well that periodically heals a nearby allied hero for six, 164 health. The well only fades after healing 10 times or if it is recast. This cooldown is reduced by one second each time Anduin heals an allied hero. Um, which isn't, or it's pretty good. I'll throw that out. Unfor I wish it was something like two seconds every time you dealt damage to an allied or an enemy hero. Or rather, heal an allied hero. Because I really only heal people with my abilities. I want to see if this works. No, it does not. Okay. Eh, I'm upsetty. So yeah, light well's garbage. Don't take light well. That's what I've learned. Um. But yeah, uh, I would take either Holy Nova or Inner Focus. They. Inner Focus takes a lot of thought process to pull off correctly. Uh, whereas Holy Nova is just, hey, I've thrown a star, it's gonna explode now, good luck! <laughs> really, that's that's all it is. Uh, Speed of the Pious, Holy Nova, and... Lastly, level 20 talents. I'm pretty sure I said this, but Light Bomb doesn't get an upgrade at level 20. Um, I don't think I'd take Light of Stormwind, but it does sound fun. Holy Word Salvation healing is increased up to 30% of the target's maximum health upon end. And upon ending, allied heroes gain 40% movement speed for 3 seconds. So it's channel for 3 seconds to give your allies a 40% movement speed buff and 30% of their max health back, as long as you don't get CC'd in any capacity. Um, it's interesting. I don't think I would take it, but it definitely sounds like a potent ability. Um, but I like the other talents that I get. Uh, namely, Glyph of Faith where Leap of Faith gains a second charge. So you can call people to... I don't know if it refills all charges immediately. I didn't check if the cooldowns are separate. I also don't really want to wait around for 80 seconds for that to come off cooldown, so I couldn't tell you exactly. Um, but the other talent is... Or the other talents, rather, are Varian's Legacy. Basic attacks burn enemies for 191 damage over 3 seconds and heal Anduin for half of the amount that they deal. Um, so I deal 191 damage over 3 seconds. I get healed for... Uh, shit, math is hard. 95-ish. Uh, 95.5 health per second. Um, which would take off more time from a light well. Because, you know, uh, bold strategy, or rather, Pursued by Grace and Varian's Legacy, they both count as dealing damage um, to heroes. And Desperate Prayer is weird. Activate to desperately heal an ally hero for 100 or 1184 health, but kneel for two seconds and unable to act. It's basically a different version of Rhaegar's uh, Ancestral Blessing. But instead of it taking a second for it to arrive on the target, you can't move for two seconds. Which, admittedly, isn't that bad. I guess the idea would be... Uh, I'll reset talents real quick. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I would. I, the idea is that you hit them with that, and then you run off to an area where you're safe, and then hit them with that, and then they get a lot of health back over five seconds, and get a decent amount of, uh... Or, yeah, they get a decent amount of health back over a really short amount of time. Unfortunately, it's on a 40-second cooldown, and once I trigger that, it puts Desperate Prayer... or er, puts Flash Heal on a 10-second cooldown. Which is where I get most of my healing... Which, which is where I get a consistent amount of healing from, rather. Let me rephrase that. Uh, but yeah, I would take either Varian's Legacy or Glyph of Faith, because it would just kind of help you with pulling people through the battlefield to safety or to slap and range. Um, but my my build idea would be to take Moral Compass. Uh, I need to find out something about Power Word Shield. I don't think it's going to work the way I, I'm expecting it to, but I'm going to find out real quick. I'll just throw that over there, and then we'll walk on over here. No, it doesn't work the way I thought it would. Okay, never mind. So I'd still take Binding Heal. I thought the Holy Nova explosion would uh, count as the Holy Star hurting enemies, but it does not, so I'm not going to bother with it. Uh, definitely take Binding Heal. But that is the build that I would take. Bold Strategy, Moral Compass, 
Binding heal. It really def depends on what the team needs. If you need more engagement, light bomb. If you need more, uh, if you need protection on the back line, power word or holy word salvation. Speed of the pious though, holy nova and Varian's legacy. So I can throw that out there. I won't let you harm my people. And heal that dude for a little bit of health every time my flames proc. It's pretty decent. It's it, it, it's a decent amount of healing that doesn't require any amount of thought or care put into it. It's just kind of do the thing. Also, the auto attacks that come out of Moral Compass also apply Varian's Legacy. Um, but yeah. That is the build I would go with. That is that is how I would build Anduin. Um, I don't know if he's going to be a strong hero or not. I definitely know pulling people... Uh, excuse me, I definitely know pulling people from the brink is going to be potent. And by brink, I mean from death. Just, just oh hey, cool, that guy's dying. You yoink, gonna yoink him out of existence. Uh, I guess the idea is you throw that out, then you pull someone to you, and then run away. Because I'm pretty sure they come to where you're standing, not where you cast it. Because it says Anduin's location. But I want to find out for certain. Select ally hero, come back out, Artanis. I need you for a second, buddy. I want to I want to find something out. Coming out. There you are, chief. Uh, toggle cooldowns. So throw that out. Oh wait. All right, yeah, he's going to he's going to sit in the middle, right. So I throw that out. I click that. No. Uh, well, I can't really tell if it No, it goes to where I initially cast it. Okay. So the idea, my idea doesn't quite work the way I thought it would, but whatever, it's decent. And explosions. Yeah, um, also if you're pulling an ally with you, chances are they're going to keep moving in the direction that you're moving in. So you throw that behind you, you pull someone with you, you catch the star and it explodes on whatever you might be near. I, I don't know how that's... It's gonna be hard to pull off, admittedly, because, like I said, you're a very squishy melee or a very squishy uh, ranged character. But it does sound fun, nonetheless. Um, and I, I don't know. That's that's really all I got for Anduin. Um, I guess you could swap out Varian's Legacy for really any of these talents at level one or level twenty. Uh, none of them are particularly bad. The worst one, I think, actually might... Or the one... Blah, 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 blah. The worst one, I think, would be Desperate Prayer because it's just a worse version of Light of Stormwind. But it's immediate and there's no delay on it. It's just you click an ally, boom, they get 1,200 health back immediately, which is a pretty big deal. But I am going to go. For those of you who are new, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to. Uh, but if you don't, I don't blame you, because I've been at this for a while, and I'm just going to get rid of Hartanis here. We don't need you anymore, bud. See you, Chief. So yeah, I've been at this a while. Uh, I'm going to go. I, I've done all of the theory crafting that I think I would want to do with Mr. High King of Storm. Well, he's just regular King of Storm, when he's not the High King yet. I don't know what he is. I just know that he's the, he's the ruler of the Alliance now, because his dad got murdered. But I... I don't have anything else to say about him. Uh, that's that's pretty much the build I'd go with. So, I hope you all enjoyed this. I will see you all in the next project. Um, hopefully, there's a couple more updates for HOTS before they completely axe uh, production on it. But I wouldn't be surprised to find out that after this year, updates are going to be hilariously slow. But I'm going to go. Hope you all enjoyed this, and I'll see you all next project where... I don't know what I'll be doing. Probably just more hot stuff. But I'm going to go. See you, everybody.